Welcome in the name of our one God, creator, redeemer, and comforter. We welcome you this morning, whether you are with us in person, we're grateful to see you face to face, or those of you that have joined us online, we're glad to have you with us. Pastor Dondina Johnson will be giving our message later this morning in the service. As the body of Christ at Anderson First United Methodist Church, we fulfill our mission to make disciples for Jesus Christ by following our pathway, living our faith, nurturing families, serving our communities. Our Bon Ami trips, Bon Ami is a group of anyone who would like to attend uh, that takes goes to different events and activities. And uh, the first one scheduled for 2023 is a Pacer game, which is Saturday, March 18th. The registration deadline for that event, for the Pacer game, is Friday, February 17th by noon. There are many more details. There's some details out at the Welcome Center or there will be details in our newsletters. So please watch for more details as you see them, but invite you to plan on joining us for a Pacer game. The 2022 giving statements are available for you to pick up. Those are available out in the narthex or lobby, and it's near door two on this side of the narthex. There's a small table. So be sure to look through those and collect your giving statement for your own tax purposes. And if you happen to worship with us online, those will be mailed. So um, you'll get your statements. If you want to arrange for another way to receive your giving statement, please let us know by contacting the church office during the week. Our prayer bears have been replenished. These um, are available for you to take to someone who needs a prayer and a reminder that they are cared about and loved. So you're welcome to take those. They're available to you if you happen to have a story to tell about those. Please share your stories with Deanne Williams, who provides these bears, or myself. We'd love to hear about uh, how they're making a difference in the lives of the people that have received them. As we now move into our time of greeting, those of you that wish to remain seated and in an attitude of prayer, you may do so. The rest of us, please let us stand and greet one another with the joy of knowing Jesus Christ. As you return to your seats, 
It has been brought to my attention that we have a blessing in our midst, and I wanted to just be sure that we all acknowledge that and praise God for the presence of Cliff Ambler with us, who has been apart from us because of health issues, and we're just so grateful, Cliff, that you're back with us today. We praise God. Susan Finger will now lead us in centering our hearts for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able to do so. Let us all join together in our call to worship. Jesus commanded, love one another. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants. Now I call you friend. We, we come, come to worship whose friends, friends we are through, through Christ. Christ. Let us sing praise to God and live in love and friendship following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kids, it's your time. Would you come on up? All right. Good. I'm going to have you stand on this uh, step right here. And 
kind of face everyone because they don't get to see your face easily very often. All right. There you go. Hi, Sydney. All right. Before I um, talk to you, I'm going to show the uh, congregation something. Okay. I want you to take a look at this. This is what the children will be seeing and thinking about here in just a moment. Okay. All right, I have a picture here, and I would like to know who you think this is. Yeah, Emma. Jesus. Okay, why do you think this picture is Jesus? I mean, you don't know. It just looks like Jesus? Okay, anyone else and have an idea? Do you agree with Emma, or do you think it's someone else? Someone else? Who do you think, Ian? I don't know. You don't know. All right. Emma, I mean, uh, Lucas, same, you think it's Jesus. You think it's Jesus, Ryan? Oh, so why do you think it's Jesus? How do you know it's Jesus? Hmm. Well, I don't know what you're seeing in that exactly, except... I think you're right. The, off, the, print, the artist here titled this Jesus Laughing. So whatever it is about this picture that you see, the artist wanted you to think Jesus. Okay, now if you were to be asked, someone asked you, hi Connor, glad you're here. If someone were to ask you, who is Jesus? What would you say? Yeah, Kaylin. God's son. God's son. All right. Any other answers? Yeah, Ian. Who is Jesus? I'm sorry. Say it again. He's here at church? Oh, okay. I think so. Anyone else? Who, if somebody asked you, who is Jesus, what would you say? What? A human. A human. What do you think? Would you call Jesus Lord? Yes. Would you call Jesus hmm, Shepherd? Yes. Okay. Would you call Jesus um, Hmm. Savior? Yes. Okay. How about friend? Would you call Jesus friend? Okay. What, what is a friend? If Jesus is a friend, what is a friend? What does a friend do? How would you describe a friend? He would be best friends. Best friends. Yep. What's a best friend? Oh, you guys need a cookie or two to... <laughs> Give you a little energy, yeah? All right. What? Someone you can look up to. Okay, friends or someone you can look up to. Yeah. Hmm. Well, did you know that the Greek word for friend is also the same word for love? Hmm. I think that's interesting. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being our friend. Amen. All right. Godly play.
Let us quiet our hearts and minds and go to God in prayer. God of journeys, we have gathered today to continue our journey of faith. Our walk with you is never a lonely walk. It is a family occasion. We are infinitely invited to take our life's journey in the company of your children. If we lag behind, there are those who will turn and offer words of encouragement, hold our hand and offer assistance over obstacles, share refreshment, help us from our knees when we stumble. God, our walk with you should never be a lonely walk, but a joy-filled experience as along the path others join us. Attracted by the company of your children, singing together songs of praise and offering prayers of thanksgiving. This path is worn down by tears and joy, sacrifice and forgiveness. It is not a trail where those who are resistant are dragged, but one that is used by those who heard Christ call, Come, follow me. Our journey with you takes us to some places where we anticipate, like here, this church, to worship, serve, and fellowship together. Other destinations are new and unknown to us, drawing us out of our comfort zone, like meeting new people, standing next to a person crying, visiting one who is battling for their life against an unseen enemy of disease. Alone, we would be uncomfortable at best, even terrified. Instead, we have confidence knowing that our journey is a family event, and you, as our Father, never leave our side. And now, as this family we will lift our voices as one to offer to you back the prayer you gave us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Wonder salvation is in my reach. Oh. 
God cares whether we help the poor, pay just wages, or steal from others. The so-called wisdom of our time is often does not care about these things. But Christ, in whom we believe, values these things, and so must we. We belong to God, and all we have belongs to God. Let us praise our God, who teaches us to be holy with our money. Let us stand and sing together. We bring our offerings to you, O Lord, not because you need them, but because you are holy. Through these resources, we ask that you, who is without a coat, be clothed, and she who is hungry be fed. We bring these offerings before you and ask that they be used to fulfill your holy purposes. Amen. Good morning. Our morning lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapters 15, verses 12 through 15. This is my commandment, that you who love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. This is God's word for God's people today. Thanks be to God. When I think back to my childhood Sunday school days, the person who pops immediately into mind is Lucille Friesen. Now, Lucille was a farmer's wife in the fertile San Joaquin Valley of California, a great place to live, by the way. And if I remember correctly, she and her husband David grew peaches and apricots. Oh, my goodness. I've never had better peaches and apricots since those days. Just thinking about them makes my mouth water. There wasn't any fruit so sweet and juicy as theirs. And then when they put them into pies, heaven, absolute heaven. Anyway. David and Lucille attended the church that my father pastored in Atwater, and Lucille was my Sunday school teacher pretty much all the years that we lived there as a family. Her children were in high school and or older by the time um, I was there, but Lucille's love for children was expressed through the opening of her home to countless foster children and in teaching the children of her congregation their first formal lessons about what it means to follow Jesus. Lucille must have loved singing because we sang a lot in Sunday school, but she always began our class singing the same song, sort of our call to worship or maybe our call to stop talking and pay attention. That song was Jesus Loves Me. Sing it with me, will you? Jesus loves me, this I know. 
for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. She always said the same thing after we had finished singing that song. Jesus is your friend. And Jesus loves you very much. I still had a lot to learn about this Jesus and about friendship and about love and what it means to be a friend and what it really means to love others. But I learned one thing above all else in Sunday school when Lucille was my teacher. Jesus was my friend who loved me, even me. Somewhere along the line during those years, I also learned that Jesus was always watching me to see how well I was following the rules. And that was a little frightening. But if you'd asked me the question, who is Jesus, I would no doubt have answered, he is my friend and he loves me. But then, of course, I grew up, as we all do. And tragically, some children grow up too soon. And we experience the world in all its wonder and awe, but we also experience its pain and its hurt and its complicated choices. And we learn that friendships are often abused or taken for granted. They are not always what they seem to be. And neither is love. We learn that the world is more interested in power and privilege and the accumulation of stuff. And we are told that friendship and love are found in power and privilege and stuff. And slowly but surely, the joyful abandon, the uncomplicated nature, the awesome freedom we once knew in love and friendship is only a memory of a time long past when we were young and we didn't have the responsibilities of mature adulthood. Interestingly, Pastor Corrine shared with us at our staff meeting last week some research that has shown that children smile 400 times a day, but most adults, only 20. So, we've put away those childish things for maturity. And I think we've ended up giving away our wisdom. I don't think we've done this consciously, but somehow, the profound truth, key, I think, to the entire gospel message, that Sunday school lesson that Jesus is my friend and Jesus loves me very much has gone the way of childish things. Friend seems too simple, too soft, too immature a way of understanding and living with Jesus. And it is, in truth often mocked if someone is observed living in this reality as an adult. But the Bible, I believe, tells us a different story about friendship with God. Diana Butler Bass suggests that friendship is anything but immaturity. It is a gift of wisdom. Think about it. The first story in the Bible is about friendship. Our earliest ancestors, Adam and Eve, walked in the beauty of God's creation in intimate communion with God, nothing to fear. They shared a common breath, a common spirit, a common 
vocation, taking care of God's good creation. Everything was harmonious. A community of friends with all creation. And God said, this is very good. Well, stuff happened. <laughs> a choice was made. Maybe it was a curious choice. Disobedient, yes, but maybe a curious choice all the same. Adam and Eve left childhood behind, you might say, and grew up learning a lot about good and evil. And that harmonious world they enjoyed broke apart and violence and fear and death entered their reality. But even so, God was present, seeking those people out by his spirit who were willing to enter into relationship with him. Abraham and Moses were called friends of God. David was a man after God's own heart. These were not immature and childish men, but men hardened by the stuff of life, grown men who are lifted up for us as ancient examples of the kind of relationship God longs for with all men and women and children. God longs to be our friend. And almost in answer to that longing, the word became flesh and lived among us. God in the flesh, living with us, laughing, touching, eating, sharing himself with us, enjoying being with us, showing us what true friendship is and what it means to be a friend. And one day, out on a hillside, while he was teaching the crowds of people who came that day to catch a glimpse of Jesus, to see his smile and hear his encouraging words of promise that fill them up to the brim with hope, on that day, some mothers also came with their children in tow. They pushed their way through the crowd, and the disciples blocked their way to Jesus. Go away, he's too busy. But Jesus beckoned the children to come to him, and he touched them, and he smiled at them, and he blessed them. These children of low status, with no voice and no choice, depending totally upon the whims of their fathers, these children were lifted up as examples to the crowd. Maybe Jesus welcomes them not only because he wants to teach a lesson about the worth of every individual, no matter their status, but because also children understand the nature of friendship and love that is lost on all of us who have grown up. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Bass paraphrases this passage in this way. Truly, I tell you, unless you return to first friendship, the way of trusting love and playfulness, you will not know anything about the life God promises. And then another day came, a more ominous day than that earlier hillside day in the sunshine. <clears throat> Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, and a deeper lesson of friendship and love was about to be enacted. They had eaten the Passover meal together. Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples. Judas had gone out into the night to carry out his treachery. And Jesus 
pours out his heart to these anxious and uncertain friends of his. He reminds them of his love, and he calls them to love one another. He encourages them to abide in him, to stick close, because he is the way and the truth and the life. He promises them that the Holy Spirit will help them along the way, even when everything and everyone comes against them. And Jesus admits that they will know sorrow when he is taken from them, but he promises that it will not be forever. You will know joy again. And it is in this context that Jesus speaks the word of our gospel reading that you heard earlier this morning. Let me read it to you again. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made everything known to you that I have heard from my Father. This is astonishing, really. In the theological word world, Friendship is not often talked or written about. We've sort of relegated friendship to the secular world. But in John's gospel, we find something entirely different. For Jesus, friendship is the ultimate relationship with God and with one another. As I mentioned to the children this morning, one of the most common words for love in Greek is philio. And the Greek word for friend is philos. In the New Testament, then, a friend is immediately understood to be one who loves. And what is so completely astonishing to our modern age is that included in Jesus' definition of love and friendship is to lay one's life down for one's friend. And of course, that is what Jesus was about to do. For the sake of being our friend, look at what God has done. There are three aspects of this text I would like to mention briefly. The first has to do with the laying down of one's life for a friend. When we speak of friendship, we do not usually speak in terms of life and death. At least, I don't. I celebrate with my friends. I eat a meal around a table with them. In times of need, they help me and I help them. We listen to each other and we share and we laugh together. But do I literally think about dying for that friend? It never crosses my mind. There are things, however, that we more typically lay down, like surrendering our isolation, our burdens, our despair, our time, or our self-interest on behalf of our friend. And in that laying down of our life for our friends, we also benefit. Friendship receives as much as it gives, don't you think? And there are those who do, of course, because of friendship, pay the ultimate price. And we can name those who have done so and have inspired us or maybe even saved us. There are some words in this passage, however, that trouble me. They sound so conditional. 
Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And that commandment stated in verse 12 is that we should love one another as Jesus has loved us. Now, what kind of relationship and friendship is that? Is Jesus' friendship to me, is Jesus' love for me contingent on whether I have loved everyone as he has loved me? See what I mean? It's a little troublesome, isn't it? Back in August of 2019, there was a photo that went viral. I didn't see it at the time, but I've seen it since. Look it up online. You'll find it there along with this story. It was a photo of two little boys holding hands as they entered school. One of the boys, whose name is Connor, is autistic. And in 2019, he was entering the second grade, going to school alone for the first time. He had handled the bus ride with no difficulty. But when he got to the school, he froze in fear. He simply couldn't walk into that school building. And so hiding in a corner, he started crying. Well, Christian, who was also walking into the school that morning, saw Connor crying in the corner and went over to comfort him. And then he took Connor by the hand and they walked into the school building together. Connor later told a reporter, Christian was kind to me. I was in the first day of school and I started crying. Then he helped me and I was happy. Connor's mother said later, Christian is Connor's first real friend. Christian's mother reports that the boys have become an inseparable bond. What a story. What a picture. A white boy named Connor huddled in a corner and a black boy named Christian reaching out to help him. Bass offers an understanding of Jesus' command to love as he loved when she writes, Friendship is contingent on love, real love, that is. Compassion, empathy, reaching out, going beyond what we imagine is possible. That is the command, love. And if we reach out in love, friendship is the result. Even friendship with God. Friendship is mutual, a hand extended and another reaching back. Jesus' love is always there. And friendship is offered with his extended hand to receive it. To know it fully, though, we too must reach out and take hold. The mutuality of love and friendship suggests one more thing, it seems to me. Friendship is not just for friends. Friendship is for the good of the world. And this notion is sprinkled all through scripture. The prophet Isaiah tells the people of God, it's too light a thing that you should be my servant for the sake of Israel alone. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation, and we might say my love and friendship, may reach the end of the earth. And Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, calls the people to love their enemies. For if you love those who love you, what reward is there in that? The love and friendship of God extended to us calls us to give up our false understanding of friendship as exclusive, offered only to those we prefer or who are like ourselves or who think like we do. Instead, we are to set a table where everyone is welcome, where strangers become friends, 
and everyone is an honored guest. There are many ways in which we can understand and know Jesus. We know Jesus as teacher and savior and as Lord. We know teacher as the way and the truth. We know Jesus as presence. We know Jesus as the son of God. But if we go back to our childhood and renew our relationship with Jesus as friend, we will have it all, it seems to me. We will know what Jesus meant when he promised us abundant life. It's not always easy for me to think of Jesus as my friend, but sometimes bringing an image to my mind helps. When I am still, and when I want to talk to him as a friend, I picture us sitting side by side on the edge of a cliff looking out over the ocean on a warm and sunny day. He's always there waiting for me. Let us sing. Just an announcement before our benediction. Um, security has found a set of keys. If you've lost a set of keys, uh, check with them. Please stand for our benediction. Now may the love and friendship of God expressed in Jesus and encouraged by his Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>